cargo. Stowaways looking for a free ride to the USA. Stowaways have been known to climb mooring ropes at night and are sometimes even hiding inside the containers. If they get on board, they pose a real security threat. While the crews search for stowaways down below, up on the bridge, the officers are planning for the sea voyage ahead. It's the second mate's responsibility to plot the course. It's an intricate combination of old world tradition and new age technology. He does his initial plotting using charts, slide rule, and compass, and then transfers the data into a computer. The advanced software then links his data to the satellite navigation systems and radar. The result? The officers on the bridge can plot the ship's course and see any oncoming traffic, all in real time. Well, the beauty of that for me is you see where you are instantly. You see exactly where the ship is. And there's many times I have to be on my own, so I need to know where she is. A ship of this size, when she's drawing 13.6, 14 meters, we need to know exactly where she is. The search for stowaways below deck is complete, and the crew have given the bridge the all clear. Nearly 22 hours after first docking, all of the new containers are on board and are being secured for the long trip to Hong Kong. Each container is lashed to the rows above and below in a matrix which locks every single container rigidly in place. This ensures that none of the cargo, including those bottles of Australian wine, will shift if the Atlanta starts pitching in a storm at sea. A full two hours later than planned, but with all cargo on board and firmly secured, the Atlanta is ready to leave Singapore. Taking a giant out of port can be even more difficult than bringing one in. And of course, that clock has started ticking again. Coming in and out of port, we're under more stress than when we're sailing out in the open sea. And we got deadlines to meet, sailing schedules, he wants us there at a certain time, we can't get there. And it all adds to your level of stress. It chips. It chips. It chips. As with arrival, Captain Llewellyn shares command with Zamil Nair, the pilot. In these confined waters, the bow thrusters get a full-blown workout. Nair uses all his experience. First, reversing the Atlanta before the tugboat with all of her 4,000 horsepower helps spin the Atlanta away from the docks and points her in the right direction. Steady as she goes. Single four, pilot, single four. Steady, steady, steady. Pilot, single four. With the Atlanta slowly increasing speed and safely on her way, Nair now needs to meet up with another incoming ship. It's a transfer that involves a hair-raising climb, followed by a brave leap to the pilot boat, all at a speed of over eight knots. One slip could be his last. By his calculations, it's a leap of faith that he performs as many as eight times in one working day. Once the Atlanta is out in open waters, Captain Llewellyn resumes sole command of his megaship. It will take the Atlanta two and a half days to sail to Hong Kong from Singapore, traveling a distance of over 1,460 nautical miles. That's a lot of time at sea. Time that's taken up with regular maintenance and a strict timetable. You must have a routine. You're keeping yourself ready and waiting for the next challenge. Once a week, Captain Llewellyn, the first mate, and the bosun carry out inspections of every section of the Atlanta's living quarters. Home entertainment here, Chief, mate. Home from home. Home from home. 
For the captain, the giant can only run efficiently if attention is paid to every tiny detail. That applies to every inch of the ship. While the crew's quarters are checked, the crew themselves have their own inspections to carry out. Electricity is crucial for all the ship's operating systems. The engineers are responsible for keeping all five 3,000 kilowatt generators running smoothly. Without them, the Atlanta would be dead in the water. The refrigerated containers also rely on electricity. The crew have to check the temperature of every single reefer twice a day. It's a full-time job to keep perishables like the Australian seafood in tip-top condition. And guess what? The Atlanta can carry over 700 of these refrigerated units. Although the Atlanta is surrounded by water, none of it, of course, is drinkable. Every drop of fresh water on board is made by turning seawater into drinking water. The ship's desalination plant can treat 30,000 liters a day, but it has to be cleaned regularly. Salt builds up on plates, which have to be stripped, cleaned, and put back into operation quickly. Another thing that's crucial to life on board is food, plenty of it and it has to be kept fresh. The Atlanta has its own mini reefers in the living section. This is the bedroom. This cookie looks after everything absolutely perfect. It's one of the best I've been with. It sets everything out, it rotates, it keeps his storerooms immaculate. A key member of the crew who's hardly seen and seldom heard, but is crucial for harmony on board, is the cook. He orders and prepares all the food and has to come up with a menu that'll keep all 22 men of varied cultural backgrounds happy. 22 meals three times a day, seven days a week. And he does the washing up. For the captain, Sharing meals with the crew is about far more than just the food. One of the beauties is to bring them all together, to sit down and eat together. And you make them feel part of the team. If you don't have a team, you can forget this life. You must work as a team. If there's ever a time when a good team spirit is needed, it's tonight. The ship is entering dangerous waters the security level has been raised. The South China Seas are busy with all sorts of craft. Many are small fishing boats miles from shore. Some, however, may not be at all interested in fishing. Pirates trawl these waters, looking for the ultimate catch. Heading on 308, sir. Well, they're there. You don't know where they are, but they're there. They're watching all the time. So it's, it's a threat. We know that threat. Official figures show there can be three pirate attacks every two weeks in these waters. Third mate, I've got two targets here. And these guys that come aboard, if they can get aboard, they're ruthless. They'll kill for the US dollar. Modern pirates don't wear eye patches and don't carry daggers between their teeth. Today, they carry machine guns, AK-47s and M-16s, and travel in high-powered speedboats. Three, five, two, three miles. We're a soft target. We're easy. We're not armed. We're just easy. They know that. Starboard 20. Starboard 20. 